to A-level physics looking at Hooke's law and Young's modulus. When a tensile force is applied to an object, it will cause it to stretch. A member of a structure that is in compression is called a strut, and a member in tension is called a tie. A push causes compression, and a pull causes tension. For instance, this elastic band, when I stretch it, is in tension, therefore called a tie. And when I compress this blue tack, it is a strut. The extension and compression of material is dependent upon its length, thickness, density, etc. Stress is defined as the force per unit area of a material. It is calculated by F over A. Where sigma is stress, where F is the force applied, and A is the cross-sectional area of the object. Stress is measured in pascals. Strain is defined as extension per unit length. It is calculated by X over L, where X is the stretch length, and L is the original length. Strain has no units because it is a ratio of lengths. So for instance, if we had a stretchy material and we applied the tensile force, it would move a distance x. So here's the stretchy material and we tie it to a fixed point. We're going to call this distance L. We stretch it a length x. If we apply tensile force, we have tensile stress and tensile strain. If we apply compressive force, we have compressive stress and compressive strain. Now we're going to look at Young's modulus. If you plot a graph with stress against strain for an object showing a linear elastic behaviour, you get a straight line. Strain and stress. What do you get? You get a straight line. This is because stress is proportional to strain. The gradient of the straight line is Young's modulus E, which is equal to stress over strain. Young's modulus is constant and does not change for a given material. It in fact represents stiffness of the material, as so Young's modulus is basically measuring the stiffness of the material. Young's modulus is measured in pascals. Next, we will look at Hooke's law, which is given by F equals Kx. where f is the force applied, k is the spring's constant, and x is the length of the extension. Hooke's law applies to anything that can be stretched and which will return to its original form. This is known as elastic materials. Hooke's law doesn't apply to an object which can be stretched but does not go back to its original form, like this elastic band obeys Hooke's law. It goes back again. But this blue tack does not. Because when I stretch it, just simply stays there. If we put stress against strain, we see a straight line. But if you stretch any material too far, it will snap or deform. This is called plas the plastic limit. So, here's Hooke's law. An object obeys Hooke's law at this point. But when you snap or deform an object, you will see a curve. This is called the elastic limit. Now, the stress at the elastic limit is called breaking stress, the stress when the material breaks. And finally, the definition of Hooke's law is the extension of the material is directly proportional to the force stretching it. So we know Hooke's law, we can now determine how much potential energy an object has when a tensile force is applied. So you're wondering, how do you calculate it on a graph? Well, we basically on the area of a triangle. That's the potential energy obtained. Well, as you do this, it's half stress times the strain. Why? Because the energy stored on the graph, in this case, is a triangle. And to work out the area of a triangle, you do half base times the height. But remember, you only work out the potential energy below Hooke's law and not at a plastic state when the object is deformed.